All right, let's go. We're finally continuing the story. We don't have to read anything now. I'll probably just read them the moment they start appearing in the game now. It's just the thing about um those ones was just they were rapidly giving them to me constantly and it was just like oh please This chump. Isn't he, just, isn't he a sleepy little fella? Ha ha. Shh. That's just the passing. Keep the noise down. Yeah. Oh boy, um... Operate the lava. This ship is massive. I know I keep saying this, and I know I said this earlier, 
but your memories are returning, aren't they? <sighs> Maybe. You hate them so much. What's your problem? Ever since we stopped the magic energy leaking from Grand Staff, you get that look sometimes. Did you get exposed back there? I got no use for the past. Kaim! Don't say things like that! It's none of your business. <sighs> hey, we... Great, yeah. Maybe I was just a little too quick to throw that black pearl. Golly, I gotta lighten up. I'm just way too tense. I need to get back to those three girls. Load these into the left. Yes, sir. My stuff! My weapons! Load them. He makes it sound really easy. What is... What does he think? My arms are made of steel? <laughs> Move all this stuff by sound? Okay. Just take it right now. Now we can get our weapons right. Yeah. Feels good. Weapons recovered. All right, transformation complete. Excuse me. Transformation. What are you talking? I finally got to sleep, and now you come along and wake me up. You owe me for this. Don't be like that. If anyone finds out you're sl you sleeping, are you there? Where did you come from? As they found us. Not much choice left for us. Let's just take them out quickly. So they don't have, do they have anything interesting? Pumas of Despair, that concerns me that they have that. At least we're, as long as we're past that, because I, it's annoying to have to do anything around. Queen must be in there, right? I mean, no dude plays a harp. Uh, yeah. Queen? <laughs> Ignore it. It'll lead to trouble. Hey, I've got a sixth sense about these things. The Queen's got to be hot. I didn't pay my respects. I mean, I'd have to turn in my man card. <laughs> Time to work my magic. Ugh, idiot. <sighs> what are you trying to pull, <gasps> Jensen? Open up! <clears throat> it's no use. <sighs> Moron! Do you know anything about the Queen? Well, from a long time ago. If nothing's changed since then, she's definitely someone I know. 
Looks like your own memories are returning. So you're not afraid of the past? No, I like the past. It's thanks to the past that I'm here now, right? If memory serves me correctly. She's someone from the past who made me who I am now. <laughs> she smiled when she held out her hand to me. Even when stranded in the middle of the ocean, faced by me, a pirate, she wouldn't show any fear. I felt a certain kind of strength, and a special kindness from her. The queen could have arrested me for piracy, but instead she invited me to her palace. We talked about a lot of things. It was a huge surprise to find someone in such a high station who was so open-minded. <laughs> no, she wasn't just open-minded. Even though we just met, it felt like we'd known each other for years. Our talk seemed full of nostalgia. <laughs> I laughed for the first time in a long time. I don't know if she felt the same way, but at any rate, she seemed fascinated by everything I said. Treasure hunting in the Great Eastern Ruins, beating the crap out of pirates who stepped out of line. I covered it all. Tell me about your life. But when I look back at the way she let me keep talking, I think she might have longed to be free, just for a moment. Here, take this. Hmm, scoring a queen's pendant without a fight. I must be really lucky today. No, I'm only lending it to you. The next time we meet, I want it back. <laughs> You still have it? Ooh, can't pass up a chance like this. Sorry, gang. How are I gonna be in play with this guy? Wait, your highness, please. I'm not dangerous, I swear. Whew, thank you so much. Uh, please, just don't call the guards yet. Who are you? I beg your forgiveness, your highness, for the sudden intrusion. Jansen freed at your service. I am but a simple fool, drawn here by your lovely harp song. The white boa is ordained away. Where did you come from? Any man who heard such an enchanting melody would grow wings and fly to meet you. Land or sea, just as long as he found you. Like this. Ah, I would very much like to know your name, your highness. Ning. Ning Numara. Ah, such a lovely name. And I've finally gotten to see you smile. Please, 
Feel free to laugh at this simple fool. Just seeing your smile has made it worth risking your wrath at my uninvited presence. Is something the matter? And there it is. Forgive my impertinence, but even though your smile shines bright, your highness, I also see loneliness. Your harp song you were playing earlier feels the same. It's as if it reflects your own heart. My... my heart? When you play, the melody radiates kindness and warmth. But sometimes it sinks into sorrow. That sorrow is what drove me to you and sparked a desire to smooth it away. What is that? I shall heal your sorrow. Please, trust me. If you remain here, your heart will only be stained with more sorrow. Uh, my heart... stained with sorrow? Uh, oh. Jensen, why did you really come? Uh. Ah, what a woman! I hope no one heard that. Can't hear anything from here. What's going on? I'll head back to the entrance. Oh boy. Oh, what did you do? I can't be good, although somehow I doubt that they're dead. Wait a sec, why are there stairs? Because this is the emergency escape! Whee! It leads out here, huh? Find this vanish finish this vanishing there before it catches. Don't know. This does not look good.
is as good as any place. Hey there, little guy. You lost? You're not chasing me too, are you? Whoa! Whew. Close one. You're quite kind, aren't you? Ah, you're awake, your highness. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this isn't funny. I, I need to get out you of know, there. No, I was never really asleep. Huh? <laughs> I couldn't judge your true intentions, oh. so I tested you. I sincerely apologize. Well, then do something about this, okay? Would Not ya? just now. I am the queen, and I cannot just simply run away with you. But that Kakanis bastard is taking advantage of you. You can't be comfortable surrounded by these lunkheads, can you? Even so, I will not forsake my duties. Your feet will be fine. Just remain here for a little while. Nothing higher will turn to stone. <laughs> Gee, thanks for considering my, uh, <laughs> higher parts. <laughs> you finally sound more like yourself. Huh? Such insincerity reflects poorly on your true self. Whew! All that formal speech stuff is making my shoulders stiff anyway. But I'm fired up now, my queen. When I get out of this, I'll prove my sincerity to your heart's content. Oh, yeah. You can bet on it. Your Majesty! Ah, ah crap. Oh, this is so unfair. <laughs> Have you been harmed? Testosterone, boy. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> so she already knows she's being duped by... She's being used by him, by the general and his men. But I'm pretty sure she has a contingency plan. What is happening here? What the? together in this place all our dreams all our hopes and all our dedication we shall not avert our eyes from our shadow reflection in still water nor succumb to apathy. Numata exists so that power may coexist in harmony 
with peace and tranquility. To show how our power can sow peace, I now release these visitors to our fair city. They have been prisoners. I now declare them free. <laughs> Travelers, you are free to go. Me? Me? Travelers! Thanks to Her Royal Majesty's leniency, you are now free to go. Now, move along! Royal Guards, dismiss! to no, release no. us, and now they simply turn their backs. <laughs> well, I say it's great. I mean, we're free, aren't we? Ah, oh, and it's all thanks to Ming. It bothers me that you speak so casually of the Queen. Is there something you're not telling us, Jansen? <laughs> Did you do something to her? Wait, come on. <laughs> hmm. Um... There's a witch up to my left. Okay. Oh boy, them partners. Okay. Oh, here. Yeah. Okay. Sam? This? Excuse me? Uh, apparently there are most guards here? Apparently we talked to her. Animal adoring Rona. This can't be happening. Where could my Moo have gone? My dog Moo went off somewhere all of a sudden and still hasn't come back. He probably got lost while he was looking for food again. He's such a pig sometimes. I can usually find him around here, but not today. I doubt he's left town though. Must be a side quest. Um, please remove your rooms. Until we know what we're dealing with. Oh, and Grant's immunity to fly. Recovers MP when defend. Oh, wow, that's gonna. Magic casting time reduced during critical HP. I'll do that. So... Yeah. Yeah.
Let's go. Hug the east. Hold on. Oh. Ah, you handled your role well. So, my performance was acceptable? Yes, Your Highness. We should now be able to achieve our objective. Let them loose and follow them to the truth. And what will we gain from this exercise? When we have proof they work for the enemy, we'll lock them up again. They'll give us excellent leverage in negotiations with Ura, and beyond the negotiations, we stand to gain information about Grandstaff. Grandstaff? Ura has built a gigantic magic engine called Grandstaff. And we suspect they're plotting something. Right now, Ura poses a terrible threat to the entire world. A threat? Our intel has confirmed that the tragedy at Wool Highland is connected in some way to Grandstaff. If we continue to allow Ura to run rampant, that tragedy could be repeated again at any time. The authorities in our military have voted unanimously to seize Ura as a preventative measure. You plan to start a war? The White Boa is already being converted into a battle flagship, and we've begun assembling troops and arms. This action is for the sake of the entire world. I won't allow it. While your majesty may have other ideas, the people will surely approve these safety measures. In this present magic industrial revolution, your majesty's isolationist policy is pushing the nation to its limit. National isolation promotes peace. <gasps> this new regime must be created for the sake of world peace. We shall spread your majesty's teachings using our nation's military might. You think military force can avert violence? Would you rather see a media fall on Numara? If that were to happen, the people who so adore you would be reduced to ashes in an instant. No, the Grand Staff should not be in the hands of those simple-minded fools in Ura. We Numarans should control it. Then we can use it to maintain peace all over the world. Numara would become the most powerful, peace-loving country- Or you could have gone another route. You could have destroyed Grand Staff so no one can use that such such a thing. Oh, take your heads. They should just keep quiet, play their role, and smile. Someone get in here now. The pressure. Yep. Hug the wall. Okay. I'm hugging the wall. Oh. There we go. I'm good. Oh, wait, that's ten. Never Okay, uh. Aquaphone. You? The one? Uh, no, this one. Lonely Choo Choo, what is it? My are my ears that weird looking? No, not really. Really? So why did you talk to me then? Wanna play? Come on. First sister. Alright, <clears throat> run! Well, you got me, that's weird. I thought I'd be a faster than you. Well, it's still pretty fun, so whatever. You can have this. I found it on the road. <laughs> yeah. She's nice. 
I bet you she'll be back later and be like, hey, I'm faster now. And she zips halfway across the map and it's like, oh, well, we're never going to catch her. <laughs> the end. The white pants. Look, it's a pot in the lobby. There's a pot here? Oh, there it is. It's a pot. And then, one, two, three. I got the seed. Don't. Another seed. And then this one. Anti. Anti paralysis. Nice. I love getting stuck. Go upstairs, probe the four plants. I wish they would stop saying probe the four plants. I mean pots. That just sounds... Going herb, wheat stone. 100. Well, there's the clutch. This is the 100. Enter the southwest room. This one? Guess what? It's another seed! But this is gonna be him. Oh, in the closet. Brown bomb. Northwest has me. In the closet? No, Tenji. There's the pot. Mm -hmm. Running an ore from the closet. And this gives you sticky tape. And then finally the final room. Gives you mint powder from the closet. Turn outside. Exit. Wait. Exit east. <laughs> the main street. Keep going west. Chill again. Okay. Sure. Wait, what the? When I grow up, I'm gonna be a mercenary. Why? Well, come on. Hey, so cool. My mom says I gotta help others shop. I forgot about that. If I was a nurse, I'd be a million times more famous than a soldier. All the nations of the world would be on their side. It'd be so awesome. Oh no. We went too far. All right, I've got time. Let's do this. A dream has been revealed. The rampage will fall to the enemy. It's just a matter of time. Then we'll mount their attack at dawn. The main body of the allied forces has already drawn far back 
from the front. Plenty of the mercenaries are left behind the barricade. Their orders defend it to the death. These men who have gone from battlefield to battlefield know exactly what that means. The talkative mercenary. They've just left us here to die, chuckles the one called Poma. Darkness too thick for a person to make out his own hand. They want us to buy time so the main force can pull further back. We're supposed to be their shields, performing our final service for our employers. His dry, paperly laughs, shakes the darkness. Kind says nothing in reply. Other mercenaries must be gathered there around them in the blackness, but all that keep their thoughts to themselves. Mercenaries have nothing to say to each other on the battlefield. They might be on the opposite and opposite sides in the next battle. At a time like this, especially when they have to defend a barricade against the enemy's withering attack, they can't spare the time to even look at each other's face. And there's, time knows nothing about this fighter called Toma. His voice sounds young. He probably has very little experience as a mercenary. If a man grows talkative at the face of death, it means that deep down somewhere, he has a weakness that prevents him from becoming a true soldier. A mercenary with even a hint of such weakness can never cheat death and live to see another day. It is the law of the battlefield, and a man like Toma. Toma will only learn that law in the moment before he loses his life. We're done for. We'll all be dead in the morning. We'll all have that silent homecoming they talk about. I can't stand it. I just can't stand it. In the darkness, no voices raised to second these sentiments. It's too late for talk like this. The day they chose the mercenaries' path was when they should have resigned themselves to death. They sell their lives for their little money. They prolong their lives a day at a time by taking the lives of one enemy after another. That's what a mercenary is. Nothing more, nothing less. Hey, can anybody hear me? How many of us are here? We're all gonna die together. We'll all just be aligned to corpse in the morning. Don't shut up now, answer me. No one says a thing instead of voices. The silent darkness begins to fill with a triple sense of annoyance. Wordlessly to gather on the battlefield, wordlessly to fight the enemy, and just as wordlessly to die. That is the rule of the mercenary, the aesthetic of a mercenary. If such an expression may be permanent, but Toma has taken it upon himself to abandon that aesthetic. I knew it. It was hopeless from the start. Headquarters didn't know what they were doing. There was no way a strategy like this could work. You know what I'm talking about, don't you guys? We had to lose. It's a total mess. I wish the hell I had joined the other side. Then we could have gotten them out in the cash for winning. We could have drunk ourselves blind. We could have had all the women we wanted. I could have gone either way on this one, but I picked the wrong side to play the one. Hey, you. An older. Hey you, an older voice booms out of the darkness, an angry voice. Yell what? And Homer is face more vibrant now than him. Last having found uh, someone willing to talk with him. As if to crush his momentum and enthusiasm, the older man goes on. How about shutting up for a while? If you want to run off at the mouth that much, I can send you to the next world a step ahead of the rest of us. Rest of us. I'm sorry. Dejected. Toma falls silent and the darkness grows still. The stillness has charged, however, with a deep tension far deeper even before than before Toma started talking. The veteran warriors know. Watch out for talkative men. Being talkative means trusting in words. Trusting too much in words. Words are useless on the battlefield. 
You take up your weapon in silence. You steal yourself in silence. You fight in silence. You kill the enemy or he kills you in silence. All the mercenaries here have lived this way. All but the talkative one. A soldier who clings too desperately to words may cling just as desperately to something else. To the sweet trap of his trap of betrayal, for example, or the seduction of desertion under fire, or the lure of madness. Time has also often seen pitiful mercenaries who, unable to endure the terror of being surrounded by the enemy, go berserk and hit men from their own side. Will Toma prove to be another such case? The possibility is great, and no doubt the other men are thinking the same thing too. In the stillness, they turn the same gazes towards Toma, a reserve for confrontation with the enemy, looking for any signs of change in his demeanor. The moment they perceive the slightest threat in him, a blade will soundless, soundlessly pierce the left side of his chest. Silence continues. Not even the usual online cries of insects could be heard tonight as they were last night. Perhaps the insects knew enough to clear up in advance of the enemy's dawn attack. The thought reminds Kain that he saw no birds in the area yesterday either. Although air animals came to snatch food when the men first built this fortification, there's been no sign of them for several days now. Animals have mysterious powers of foreknowing foreknowledge that humans have lost. This becomes painfully obvious from any visit to a battlefield. There could be little doubt that the animals have turned their back on this barricade. Right now, right about now in some distant forest, a huge flock of blackbirds may be taking wing in search of human courses to strip their flesh. It's, it's feast time, boys. They already know somehow. Once the sun is fully up, the battle will be over. And if they don't get here first, they'll lose their feast to the flock. From another forest, their black bodies hidden against the night sky. Those birds now are probably flying for all there were. The voice in the night, Thomas voice, weeping. Miss you guys, I don't know how many of you are out there. But we're all gonna die in the morning. Or most of us. Maybe one or two will live to escape. No more about it. Those are lousy odds. You've been through this before. You're veterans, war heroes. You're probably not scared, but even so, even if you're not scared, don't you think this is stupid, huh? Tell me. There are a lot more battles than I have, so tell me, what the hell are we here for? We don't hate the enemy. We don't. We don't owe the leaders on our side anything. But we've got to kill the enemy and follow our leader's orders, and we're still going to end up dead. You guys, don't you think it's pointless? It's stupid. Ugh. It's the impatient click of a tongue in the darkness followed by someone else. It's so annoying. Can't take it on. Uh, I can't take it anymore, sister. What? I hate this, and now he's sobbing. Sister. This guy, this guy, all I wanted was some money and maybe something better to eat. Or maybe nicer clothes. I would have been happy with that. What a mistake I made. Taking work like this, I should have never done it. One keeps on his senses open for movement in the night. Self and Toma, five other soldiers are crouching down in the darkness. Not bad. All are experienced warriors. They would not they would not have been able to put up with Tomo whining otherwise. But they let themselves get angry and started shouting at him or grabbing him by the throat of wailing, wailing away at him. They would just end up consuming their strength and energy before their work started at dawn. But this is enough. Well of men who this, if this isn't a assemblage of men who know how they're silenced. The chances for life 
are that much greater. Assuming that is that the Tarper Weeping Man does not become too great a burden for the rest of them. Suddenly something is different. Something stirs in the distance. This could be bad. Then things sharpening its attention. Yeah, then there's still more. When dawn breaks, Kama will, Koma will get in our way. Because of him, the possibility of life will wither. Sinners know that, and because they know it, they might do whatever it takes for them to secure for themselves. If even the sight is added, chance to live. To die here, I tell you, not now. Not. This dog, you guys feel the same way, don't you? Moonlight. Mm. Moonlight shines down from a rift in the clouds. For a split second, Thomas' tear-stained face appears in the darkness. He is even younger than Kaima imagined from the sound of his voice. He's practically a boy. The clouds hide the moon again, and the thick black darkness enfolds everything at once more. Turns in the depths of the darkness. Without a word, time darts wind like towards it. He was able to gauge the distance between himself and Kama during the flash of moonlight. Time grabs Toma's arm. Something hard falls to the ground. The dull light flashes again, this time at their feet and melts again into the night, into the darkness. A knife, driven by the fear of death, Toma was trying to slit his own throat. And he tries to free his arm, chops him. Oh, wait, tries to free his, his arm from Kime's grasp? Kime chops him in the solar plexus. Without uttering a sound, Toma passes out. Bad things. Lows him to the ground. Every once in a while, the moon comes out. Check your direction when that happens. Go straight towards the setting moon. What the hell are you talking about? It is the only way you can get out of here. Chosen the tiniest part of the enemy's encirclement. Of course, there is no guarantee that getting through here will save him. I have to believe in his own luck and abilities. Are you coming too? No, I'm going back. Escape. Why, you come too. Both? Let's both escape. Come with me. Homa clings to Kaim's arm as he pleads with him, but Kaim gives him a hard slap on the cheek. The flesh of that cheek is too soft to begin and belong to a veteran warrior. It is too... It is the flesh of a boy. A kid. You go home, but why? To live, that's fine. But you, you want to live too, don't you? You don't want to die, do you? Want to live? No. Kaim has no great desire to live. He lives because there is nothing else he can do. He lives because he has to. Toma is far too young. His burden of life far too fragile for him to know the pain of such a life. We live the fight. That's what mercenaries do. But get the hell out of here. You're ruining it for the rest of us. You guys will never win this battle. So why not one of my... It's our job to fight. And the heel starts back the way they came. Way a movie said he darts into the western forest to fight on the blade. I cannot know which holds out which holds out the greater promise for life. He also believes it is better than not to know, except I hope you make it boy, you mutters walking on. The eastern sky is beginning to brighten little by little. Soon the enemy's all out attack will begin. Ours. Perhaps it's meant that a small scale battle has started in this silence. Or that the poor young Mercy has fell been felled with his back to the enemy. Back or break his stride. He feels certain he has seen that talking of mercenary before. Before the war broke out, the boy was selling fruit in the market along the highway. Good boy. 
<sighs> took good care of his mother, the woman. The women of the market were saying. Never yeah, long for life. Time wishes for the boy as he himself walks on, glaring at the lightning eastern sky. Oh. Well, there you go, another one. Who likes being sad? George do. <laughs> See, I don't... Keep going west, past the cross. I do not see. I don't see Choo Choo. Yeah. Now what? Go back. Go here. What's over here? That's Canal Street. This is Main Street. Thank you, and now the loading's all taken care of. But are you sure this is okay? I want the captain to yell at you if he finds out that you've helped me. Uh, don't worry about it. This sort of thing we can handle in a flash. Yeah, think of it as, as payback for all the hot lunches you've made. Us, if you need any more help, just give us a call. Oh, come on! All right, this one's gonna have to be put on hold. What's this one called? Letters from a weekend. Yeah, this is not... There she is. What is it? You want to play with me again? Sure. Now I got the first one. Uh, you want to hit? Oh, it's a key. Also, make sure to talk to the girl standing on the gun. I'm tired of it. He was the one who suggested going to the gun on the gondola for a date, but just how long does he expect me to wait? Come on, Ed. Okay, I think I have 34. Well, 
Yeah, I found the people. And talk to me. Hey, look. This must be the dog that kid in front of the palace was looking for. Oh, hey, guess it's going back to the master by itself. Climb the ladder. Hey, Dark King. Not how you get that chest over there. It's to get this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. 